In today's video, I'm gonna talk about how I picked the perfect mobile hotel for my landscape photography. So back in June of 2020, I had gone to the Badlands National Park and during this whole you know, COVID-19 pandemic, I'll have to admit I was a little leery even wearing my mask, going to hotels and doing things out and about and trying to do my, my landscape photography. So my wife had mentioned, well, why not get some type of camper? And I was thinking to myself, what can I pull with a Jeep? So I had to try and determine what would be the best option for me because I have my Jeep Wrangler and I didn't want to go and get some type of truck to pull a giant camper. So I had to find something that would fit my means and fit what I want to do and not be too big and too cumbersome so that I could go to where I need to go, park it, and then head off uh, out under the trails. And I actually did that uh, this weekend. Here I'm in Council Grove, Kansas, photographing the Flint Hills, and it's been a phenomenal experience, especially with this camper. Before I give you a tour of my little living space here, I'm gonna go ahead and talk to you about how I picked my option here for uh, camping for landscape photography. So there was a lot of things that went into the process of me making a decision on what I wanted to use as my landscape travel resort. And I'm gonna go through these options with you, but I want you to also know that this is gonna be different for everybody. So take some of the things that I'm saying here. If you're you're considering doing this for your landscape photography, take some of the things I'm saying here and use them with a grain of salt because there might be things that are important to you that aren't important to me or vice versa. So I'm just going to list the options. Then I'll talk about these variables. Okay. So the first option, a tent, throw it in the back of the Jeep, take it with me wherever I go and open it up and sleep somewhere. The next option is some type of rooftop thing. I know we can get those for Jeep Wranglers. It's a little rooftop that you put on the top that you can pop up and sleep inside. Um, the next op option was a pop-up camper that I could tow with my Jeep. And the Sprinter van is a concept, a rather new trendy thing that a lot of people are doing uh, to get from place to place on a very minimal uh, lifestyle. Uh, the next option was to get some type of teardrop camper or small camper that my Jeep could tow or a, a truck with the camper that goes on top of the truck. My buddy Gavin Hardcastle actually has a pretty sweet setup with this. I'll go ahead and link that in the card here and put it in the description description below if you want to see his tour of his uh, traveling truck camper. It's pretty neat. Uh, the other option was to get a big camper that I could tow with my truck. And the last option was to possibly consider getting a big driver RV that I could pull my Jeep with. Now I've got a couple things that I have to have in order for, for me to be out there camping. Okay. And I, and I know that I'm not your typical average camper and you can laugh at me all you want, but I'll go into these variables in a second here. First one, running water, would love to have a shower after a long day of uh, being out in the field. Running water is also very nice to clean up my hands, clean up whatever I got to clean up before I start doing any work inside my camper on my computer uh, after getting in and transferring files. And that brings me to electricity. That's really important. You know, when I've got, you know, several cameras that I have to hook up and charge every night uh, and then also be able to dump my photos and my videos that I take while I'm on the go onto my PC, my laptop, I need to have my laptop charged and I need to have it there and capable. So electricity is very important. You can already see that some things are already being weeded out right now by these things. A place to eat is always a good thing too, because sometimes at campsites, you might have a place to eat. Other times you might not, but even then just having that table, that space in order to work out, out of is really, was really important to me in my decision-making process. Uh, propane, um, you don't have to absolutely have to have propane, but it's nice because especially with some things, uh, you can use them while you're on the go without being hooked up like your refrigerator and other things can run off of propane. And obviously we'll use this graphic as a toilet graphic, but having some place to dump your stuff is also really important as well. Last variable was to have something that my Jeep could be a part of. Okay. I like the idea of having a Jeep Rubicon while I'm doing my landscape photography because I can go anywhere. And it proved to be invaluable when I was heading out to a place called Teeter Rock in Kansas, when you know, you're on this really rugged landscape and terrain to get out there. Jeep Rubicon did it like it was nothing. And a buddy of mine told me that his, uh, his tires actually popped on the way out there the first time to Teeter Rock. So that's important to me. So you can already see here, the tent, I'm not going to do tent camping. Just to be honest with you, I've been to every survival school that the Air Force offers, and I've also slept in a tent with 300 other dudes when I first got to Afghanistan. I don't want to do tent camping ever again. All right, so call me jaded, whatever. I don't want to do tent camping, so I don't. The rooftop 
idea. Um, you know, there's a lot of amenities that I wouldn't have if I did that rooftop idea, like the running water, the shower, the electricity, those things wouldn't be very easy to do. Now I could go from place to place and maybe do that, you know, every once in a while and just for maybe one sleep, but to do it for a whole week, that wouldn't really work out for me. The pop-up camper, that was a serious option and an option that we talked about very, very strongly uh, as we were looking at the type of camper that I wanted to end up settling on. But there's a lot of amenities that were in these small teardrop campers, especially the newer ones that are just absolutely incredible. Then you know they they've gotten these things really light, so that almost anything can tow it. Um, the idea of a Sprinter van sounded great, but I mean to buy a Sprinter van and then put all the stuff that I need to put in there uh, would be a lot of money. And on top of that, I wouldn't have the capability of taking all three of my children with me somewhere. So that wouldn't really work out either. I do want to take them on these trips with me. I also want to make my own trips with them. So the, just, the space just wouldn't be available there. And I wouldn't have my Jeep as being a part of that either. The teardrop idea, that sounded great because it's got everything that we've got listed here and the Jeep could tow it so long as I could find something that would be under about the 3,000 pound range. The Jeep is capable of a 3,500 pound tow, but I didn't want to buy something that was 3,200 pounds and then put 200 pounds worth of stuff in there and then have a Jeep that could barely struggle to pull anything. And even at 2,200 pounds with the Braxton Creek that I've got here, uh, it ends up being a, a pretty... Um, not bad tow, but it's just, you know, it's, it's right there at its limit. I believe anyway, but I'm also a first time tower of anything. The truck idea with the truck top camper sounded awesome. But again, I want to have my kids go with me and I don't have a truck. So now I'd have to get the added expense of putting a truck in there and a truck that could be capable of holding something like that. That would add a, a serious expense to something that I just wasn't willing to put up. Uh, the bigger camper, not an option because I wouldn't be able to pull it with the Jeep. <laughs> I'd have to get a truck in order to do that. You see how all the things start to come into play here when you start thinking about these things. And the last and final option was to get some type of RV that could tow my Jeep. And that sounds like a great concept, but I'm just not comfortable with something that's that big that could then tow my Jeep behind it. Uh, you know, it's, there's a lot of variables in there, especially with the first time tower here. That's what I am. Uh, that just didn't seem like a very viable option to me. So I ended up going with the teardrop camper that my Jeep could tow. Now, I don't really enjoy the towing process. Um, it's not the most fun thing in the world going 60 miles an hour and everyone else around you is going 75 and 80. Um, and, and it's very nerve wracking, especially on longer trips. But the idea is I get to the location I need to get to. I park the teardrop camper. I, I get it all hooked up, takes about 20 minutes, and then I can get into the Jeep and I can go wherever I want. I also like the idea of being able to take all three of my kids somewhere, even to just do some family camping. I chose this option and I really enjoy it, whether I'm going out by myself or going out with my kids. All right, so I went ahead and changed this over to the super view because you're about to see my 30 tiny square feet of space in my camper. Oh, look at that beautiful, beautiful Jeep Wrangler that tows her. Oof, so pretty. Not the most fun tow in the world, but hey. Here is my living space. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the air conditioner. As you can see, it has air conditioning, which is very, very nice for camping. Um, but it's, it's a very small space, but it works out really well. So over here, this is where I do all of my prepping and planning. Uh, I've got my laptop there, as you can see, and I'm hooked up. Um, luckily, sometimes you might have Wi-Fi at some of these places, so you can still connect to Wi-Fi if you need to. For me, for business purposes, I need that for email. But other than that, I can usually just use a hotspot on my phone. So air conditioner, microwave, refrigerator, little uh, toilet and shower combo. Not the most comfy space in the world, especially if you have a bad back. And then here I have a bunkhouse. So the bottom bunk is great. It's actually really comfy. Even me, uh, almost six feet, 5'11", I can still stretch out the whole way and not have my knees up in my chest, which is awesome for sleeping. The top portion here, I've actually taken the top bunk off and put some peel and stick carpet here, tiles, so that I could uh, use this as a prep space. But then when my kids want to come with me on a camping trip, I can throw the other uh, bunk on the top here, the other mattress on the top here, and I've got a wonderful space for myself and my children, especially because that dinette actually folds out into a full queen size bed. So three beds in this teeny 17 foot trailer that's probably less than 30 square feet, but it's got all the amenities that I need and it's got all the things that I do need to do my photography stunt. Now this is my first maiden voyage for photography purposes. Now I have taken my kids out in this before, uh, but this is my first time with photography and I can tell you that it has been 
awesome to have this space uh, to be able to come back to a place that I can actually call my own and not feel like a hotel and really just you know do my own cooking uh, only bring maybe you know forty dollars worth of food instead of having to eat out all the time and it has been uh, really awesome especially out here in the Flint Hills of Kansas so to wrap this up I think this is a pretty awesome way to do landscape photography having this you know thing here that I can pull with my Jeep back there it's it's awesome because I can park it and I can disconnect and I can go and I can literally do it that quickly and I did a couple nights ago when I first got here at 6 p.m. had the whole thing hooked up in less than 20 minutes turned the air conditioner on took off down the road photographed some Milky Way stuff and came back and I had a great place to sleep mind you I'm also surrounded by some gorgeous landscape so it's kind of like you have a hotel but you're also in nature so you wake up and you know the lake's right there and it's just been a phenomenal experience clearly you have to outweigh whether this is going to pay itself off after you know 15 trips versus you know 15 hotel trips but it depends on your style and the types of hotels that you get i guess uh, but either way i kind of like having my own mobile space that's kind of like an extension of my home that i can go wherever and whenever i want bug bug bugs